43 years old male patient presented with history of sudden severe headache and altered sensorium for last one day. Non-contrast CT head was suggestive of subarachnoid hemorrhage in perimesian cephalic system. The patient was planned for digital subtraction and geography brain. Patient was positioned supine with a headrest and arms were placed beside the body in the extension with support. The sterile angiography equipment table should be positioned behind the operator who faces the angiography operating table. The length of the table should be long enough that catheters and wires may be stressed over it. There are multiple catheters, but use with which you are familiar. These are different diagnostic and guiding catheters. Usually we use H1 catheter for diagnostic purpose. Siemens 1, 2, 3 catheters have different length of reverse curve component with SIM3 being the longest. SIM2 and SIM3 catheters are used when usual catheters are unsuccessful in catheterization as in acute vascular opening as in type B and especially in type C aortic arch. These are guiding catheters we usually use, envoy and distal axis catheter. When we anticipate that some therapeutic intervention can be done in same sitting, we take envoy catheter for DSC and in tortuous course of vessels, distal axis catheter is preferred. These are three types of the aortic arch divided according to the ratio between the diameter of the common cavity artery to the distance between the horizontal line through the top of the arch and the horizontal line through the orifice of the innominate artery. In type A, it is less than 1. In type B, it is between 1 to 2. And in type C, it is more than 2. Here in lower pictures, we can see how easily we can cannulate the vessel so easily with SIM2 and SIM3 in type B and type C aortic arch. These are commonly used non any contrast agents for endovascular neurosurgery. High osmolality contrast media like Omnipec 300 are safe, effective and less costly but should be avoided in patients at high risk as in CHF, renal insufficiency and diabetes patient. Low osmolar contrast media like Visipec 270 relatively more expensive and should be used in high risk patient. For extracranial carotid arteriography, the injection rate is 3 to 4 ml per second for a total of 7 to 9 ml of contrast imaged at 2 to 3 frames per second. For anterior intracranial cerebral angiography, the injection rate is 6 to 7 ml per second for total of 10 ml contrast agent imaged at 2 to 4 frames per second. And for vertebral arteriograms, the injection rate is 3 to 5 ml per second for a total of 8 ml of contrast agent imaged at 2 to 4 frames per second. Following hardware are required during the intervention. Femoral sheath, guiding catheter NY6 French, Terimo guide wire. After palpation of right femoral artery at mid ingual point, we puncture the right femoral artery with puncture needle approximately two finger bit below the mid inguinal point at an angle of approximately 45 degree where the arterial pulsation are felt. Arterial puncture confirmed by jet pulsatile flow of the blood coming through the needle. Once there is free pulsatile blood flow, we stop the advancing needle and insert J wire through the needle. Once it is inside the artery, Without any resistance, we remove the needle, make a stab incision over the insertion site and insert femoral sheath with dilator. When full length of sheath is inside the artery, remove the wire and dilator simultaneously and allow blood to come out through the side arm of sheath. Then we connect it with the flush system and secure with the help of silk 2 zero cutting suture to the skin. Now we prepare the catheter which is to be introduced. We prefer to introduce envoy catheter. First flush tubing is attached via three-way stopcock to the side arm of the rotating hemostatic valve and allow heparinized saline to run through the catheter. We ensure that entire system including the rotating hemostatic valve is free of the air. We open the other valve of rotating hemostatic valve and allow saline to come out so that it become air free and tighten the valves. Now we can see the free flow heparinized saline through the tip of the catheter. Now catheter is ready for insertion. Catheter with terima wire introduced through the femoral sheath and advanced over the wire which forms support system. We should assure that wire must be ahead of the catheter at least not less than 5 cm. Catheter over the wire is advanced up to the arch of the aorta under fluoroscopy. We take arch autogram to see the origin of the vessels. Generally, arch autogram is taken in only difficult access. We take a road map, turn the catheter tip upward and advance the terimo wire in common cavity artery. After that, we advance the catheter over the wire in common cavity artery. From a common cavity artery, 
we take a dsa to take road map for internal carotid artery then we advance the wire in internal carotid artery and we introduce catheter over the wire in right internal carotid artery we do not need to advance the catheter beyond the cervical portion of internal carotid artery for diagnostic dsa from here we take biplane dsa until delayed venous phase and 3d angiogram For external carotid artery, we withdraw our catheter in common carotid artery. Again, take DSA of common carotid artery for roadmap. With the help of roadmap, we advance the catheter over the wire external carotid artery and take biplane DSA of the external carotid artery. For right vertebral artery catheterization, we withdraw our catheter in brachiocephalic trunk, take a DSA of brachiocephalic trunk, advance the wire in right vertebral artery and over it catheter is passed. We do not need to advance the catheter beyond its opening for diagnostic DSA. From the opening, we take biplane DSA of the vertebral artery. For left artery, we take the wire inside the catheter, rotate the tip of the catheter toward the patient's left side and withdraw the catheter slowly. Automatically, it will hook the left common carotid. We advance the wire and pass the catheter over it. We take a DSA of left common carotid artery, take a road map and advance the catheter in left internal carotid artery and external carotid artery one by one and take biplane DSA of both. For left vertebral artery, we withdraw the catheter slowly with T facing left side. It automatically hooks the left subclavian artery. We advance the wire in left vertebral artery and pass the catheter over it and take biplane DSA. These are my references.